when you get to creeks like this, you're gonna be looking for the inside bend here. You see that? Right in there, see that inside bend of that creek? I got a whole bunch of fine gravels and little pebbles out here. And then what do I got at the head of it? All those heavies down there that dropped out right away, just like in a sluice box. So what you're gonna do is when you come to these inside bends, you're gonna look for that. You're gonna look for those big heavy stones. Big stones, big gold. Little stones, little gold. And each creek's gonna be different. So you're gonna look for those big piles of, of cobbles, and especially if they're black. Black shiny stones are usually heavy and filled with iron. They're usually mafic in, in structure. And you can see where it turns to fine sand there ain't gonna be nothing out there if it is it's gonna be a little tiny gold if I got any gold it's gonna be right in there and that's where I'm gonna sample I've got a whole bunch of benches out here you start finding gold in here you might want to check the benches because sometimes the gold was deposited from on these benches a long time ago the river cut into them and put it down there Now the idea is to sample in three split places. Up here in the head, middle, and tail. And you're gonna trench this way. So you trench, put it in their pan. The idea is you're trying to find the pay streak. You find some here, here, and here, draw a straight line. There's your pay streak, it's as simple as that. So the first thing you need to do is determine if there's gold in there. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Now when you're raking rocks, if you don't classify, you need to bring the rocks to the back of the pan, not to the front. Remember, you want low water pressure in there, so if you can't find a spot, and the creek's going this way, you pan that way. All right, I don't think you can see it, but I got two little pieces of fly poop in there. I know there's gold in here, now the question is, is where's the pay streak? And where's the source? What you're gonna do is you're gonna compare that. You're gonna sample there and there. And what you're looking for is to see if those pieces get any bigger or rougher, coarse as they call it. That's important. Remember, you're a detective. You're not just to find gold. You need to find the pay streak. And if possible, you need to find the source. So I'm gonna figure out where that's at. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you some other places you should check. Now, people find gold in these creeks and they get all excited and happy. Well, I tell them, that's great, but you want to find out where it's coming from. If you can get to the source, that's what you want. And the first thing you do is when you start finding gold, you work your way upstream. And what you're doing, you're looking to see if the pieces are getting bigger. Now, if all of a sudden the gold stops right over there, then I know it's coming from around here. So you're going to look for these little tributaries that feed into it, just like this one. See these gravel zones here? That's all gravel. Could be from an old river channel, could be from glacial flow, could be all kinds of stuff. You're gonna sample across this bunker. You're gonna dig a small trench, pan it out right there. If you start finding gold, you know you're on a winner. You're gonna follow this up. Every 20 feet, you're gonna trench again, and you're gonna look for gold. If there's gold, compare it to the last gold. Is it getting bigger? Is it getting coarser? Is it getting rougher? So you're gonna keep following it up and see. Does it stop? If it does, you know you're close to the source. You need to go left, right, straight ahead. It's called triangulation. You need to find the source. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do here because I know that this thing is probably feeding gold into that creek and it's probably coming from up there because I think there's an outcropping. It's got a big, huge piece of basalt. It's an extrusive volcanic rock. It's got a lot of iron and magnesium in it. This thing is sitting up here high and I know that there's a reason why it's here and I'm not gonna go into that. Is I'm on one of these tiny little feeder creeks. I got a whole bunch of debris caught behind here. When Whenever they have the heavy rain seasons come through here. So what are you gonna do? Well, first thing you do is you're gonna sample in front of it. As the water comes into the front, it hits this, bam! All of a sudden the water stops. Ooh, before it decides to go left or right. As it does so, it drops all of its energy. It creates a low pressure zone. The gold drops out, bam, right there. So, and if it's on bedrock, the gold's gonna work its way underneath this rock. Water comes forward, as it hits it, it breaks that pressure zone, it drops it down creates eddy currents in the front. And as it flows around, pressure zones are in the back or even less. So first thing you do is you come around the front, you're gonna sample down far, especially if it's on bedrock. Now, a better thing to do is to get this monker out of here. Now, we're gonna put another video out there that shows you how you can get these rocks out of your way, effectively and quickly. See anything worth sampling? You gotta, you gotta visualize this place with high water. Don't look at the creek down there. Think about when the water was up to here. 
So what I'm going to do is I would check on the outside edges here in the gravel bars. I got gravels over there. I'm going to check in the root systems down here. And I'm going to see if there was enough obstruction here to make the gold drop out, if there's any gold at all. That's the first key, is being in a gold-producing district. And then I'll climb up higher and check the bedrock, of course. And then I'll go down lower and see if I got any tributaries, because sometimes the tributaries are going to be the ones that carry the gold in. All right, now we're behind this big old log right here. Looks like a big ripple in a sluice box, don't it? What you're looking for is you don't want this light flow sand. Ain't gonna be no gold in that. What you want is super hard packed, heavy mineralized iron types of rock, the round, black, shiny ones. You'll know they'll be super heavy. You're gonna look in that area. Here, I got root systems that are hard packed with gravel. I'm having a heck of a time getting it out, so I know that's a good sign. So I'm gonna dig in there first and see if there's anything stuck down in there. Remember, stay away from your flow sands. They ain't gonna have no gold in them. Make sure you bring a good digging tool with you and a good crevicing tool. You're gonna need that out here, especially when you start getting into these hard packed rocks and gravel travels in conglomerate. All right, see that? A heavy dark rock. You can see I've got a whole bunch of gneiss in here. And then I have migmatite up above. The bottom of the waterfall, I got some gravel here. I'll dig a little bit out and see if I got there too. If you see flow sand like this, you ain't gonna see any gold in this. This is all light. Ain't gonna be no gold. You want gravels like this where they've been consolidated and hard packed in behind these rocks. You wanna dig down as far as you can to where you get to an impervious zone like bedrock. And then check for there. Cause I can assure you when the water's coming down during flood stage, all this is boiling and turning and moving around. Just like in a fluid bed, sluice box all the gold's gonna drop to the bottom it's not gonna be up towards the top you need to get down as far as you can that's why you need to bring the right digging tools when you're out here I've seen people do this a lot they'll grab a bunch of flow sand they'll pan it out and they'll see what's called mica brass mica they see that in their pan or in the washes and they think they got a piece of gold and when you swirl that water It'll float away. Gold is not going to float away, even the smallest piece. And that's why you need your jeweler's loop, so you can inspect it. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Here's a good example of that mica. Do you see it? There's a piece there. There's a piece there. And there's a piece there. You see that? Now, see how easy I can break that apart with my finger now? The problem is, is people see that. And they get all gung-ho and excited thinking it's gold. Well, look how easy that washes away. If that were gold, it would stick right there in the pan. These are the type of black heavy rocks I'm talking about. They're going to be mafic in origin, which means a lot of iron and magnesium are inside of these guys, which makes them naturally heavy. You can't mistake them. They're dark and they're fine grain when you split them open. And when you try to break them open, it's going to be really, really hard to do so. So this is what you're looking for is a collection of these behind rocks or trees or some type of low pressure zone. Dig down below that. And if you're in a gold producing district, there's going to be gold there. All right. So I'm down here along the sides of the creek where the bedrock is actually poking up out of here so you see a lot of the basement rock around here which is granite and it's going to be mostly in the wash here but when you look up here on the sides you see a different type of strata i've got a lot of schistos rock right here you can see that i mean see how easy that crumbles away and that's where a lot of the mica is coming from that's inside of this creek here now if you look up above it see how that's just crumbly and falling apart i know that the roots are in there but you see all that nice red in there right there you see that that means that there's been a lot of magnetite and hematite in it and you'll tell because they'll start to oxidize when they oxidize obviously they turn red and then you can see the bands of schist schistose rock right in there and then right there you can see small little stringers or veinlets of quartz running in there you see that what you do is you dig that out you screen it and you pan it if you see changes in the, the rock from what you're seeing in here it's always a good indication that if you're finding gold that's where it's coming from pick a nice spot where the water isn't all turbulent stratify that material now it's better if you classify but i didn't bring a classifier with me break the rocks to the back and yeah you're gonna get wet As you get down to the last of the material, go slow. Look at that, just nothing but iron in there. I got stringers of quartz going through that schistose rock. And see how it's all weathering out any iron that's in there? 
Oh, that looks really good. You should mark down everything you find, everything you see, and write it on a topple map, because if you start to find it, you really need to know exactly where it's coming from. I've seen a lot of guys go out and sample and forget where it came from, or they get back to the house and they can't remember how to get back to that spot. You need to keep track of this stuff. And also keep in mind that your sampling isn't just a one-day deal. I've been on some programs that's taken me six months of sampling just to find out exactly what's inside the ground and the richest locations. So don't think you can just run out in one day, sample an area, and you're going to find gold. It might take you a couple days, a couple weekends, a couple months, maybe a couple years. But don't give up. Sampling is the key. It's basically your playing detective to find out where the best sources of gold are hiding at so you can come in during the right time of the season with bigger equipment so you can actually gold mine. So you've gone from prospecting to mining. And then you can extract a lot of gold because you already know where to go. Don't tell nobody either because I tell you what, word travels fast. You come back next year and the spot's already taken. Another good place to look for gold is in these root structures here. See how they're all interwoven into the spaces of the rock, the country rock? The gold can get washed up into these root systems and the cracks and the crevices. Also check the moss. See the moss? Fine gold can get stuck in there. And it's a good indicator if there's any bigger gold in the area or if there's any gold at all. The old timers used to do that all the time. Get all this clay out right here. This is Mother Nature's sluice box right here. See all this beautiful bedrock? Now what you want is the bedrock running across perpendicular, not in the same line as the creek or the stream. Because you're gonna have to crack and crevice all this bedrock. If you got bedrock this close and you got large rocks sitting on the bedrock, you're gonna move those big rocks out of the way and get up underneath them because the gold can't go down any further than the bedrock. So you move him out of the way and you dig down as far as you can into the bedrock and you sample there. You get into these little cracks and crevices. You're gonna need to bring a crowbar with you. And you're gonna need to get this up. You're gonna get in there and you're gonna scrape all this material out. You see that? It don't look like much, but it don't take much to make an ounce of gold now, does it? It's just a little vial. That. That's why it's important to bring your crevicing tools with you. The little screwdrivers and picks and the specialty tools. Because there's going to be times where you can't break the rock free. You get into these little tight cracks. You might even want to bring a small hand pump so you can suction out the cracks, fill them with water. And then use your suction pump to suck this out. You can even make one that you can use your mouth so you, you pull it in, you suck in, and it acts like a straw and it pulls everything up into a small container that way you don't suck it into your mouth. It's when the bedrock is smooth, like this. It's not going to trap no gold. So don't sample on bedrock that's smooth. Those are called potholes. It's what happens after thousands if not millions of years of erosion from the water digging in there and the rock churning around and grinding out a nice perfect hole. If you got rocks in the bottom of it, it's a good place to find gold that's trapped in there. But if it's all just sand, forget about it. It's probably been blown out a hundred million times. A lot of people just go here to get gold out of the river. But I'm going to explain to you where the gold is coming from and how they were mining it and where they were mining it and where you should be mining it too. See all this? This round river rock, you'll see piles of it all over the place. I got a pile here. If you look across the ridge there, I got a big pile across the ridge. Another one there, all the way up and down this canyon. You're thinking, what the heck is that? Back in the old days, the old timers realized there's good gold in these benches up here on the top that were left behind thousands if not millions of years ago. So they were up here digging in here because there's bigger gold here than there is in the river. The way that they did it, like I showed you, is they use a tram line to get it down to the river. But that's why these big piles of rocks are here, these cobbles, these rounded river rocks, is because they were working these old benches because that's where the old gold was sitting and it was really good, a lot better than what's in that river. And if you get a chance to prospect, prospect in the areas where this old bench gravel is because it's a whole lot better than going down the river. The problem is you gotta, you gotta get it down there, which means you gotta build a zip line. If you find gold, you need to find out the source, where it came from, or get as 
as close as possible to where you think it came from. And to do that, you just observe the gold. Use your jeweler's loop. Look at the texture of the gold. Is it getting bigger? Is it more coarse? Is it more angular in structure? Does it have any bits of the original host matrix attached to it? These are things you need to look for when you're out looking for gold. It's not just about finding the gold. You got to find out where it came from. Because if you can find a source, you might be able to retire, son.